Action on Highway 99 through the tunnel. The rush is over onto the Patella Bridge northbound. Still some volume delays from north and west Vancouver headed southbound on the Lions Gate. Problem three, but still. With all the noise and traffic and buildings and people, we don't always think of the city as a place for wild birds and animals. Oh, we see pigeons and crows around and hear birds at the park or in the garden, but there's a wide range of wildlife that exists in the urban environment. Surrounded by concrete and steel downtown, wherever there are trees and grass and bushes in the suburbs, in the waters around the city, and in all the parks and ponds and wild places scattered throughout Vancouver. From the residential slopes of the North Shore Mountains to the urban sprawl of the Fraser Estuary, in a variety of different habitats, and despite the changes to the natural environment, wild creatures remain. Spring begins with songs at dawn. Songs of courtship and calls of alarm as a killdeer tries to draw you away from its nest by pretending to be wounded. Birds are probably the most obvious form of wildlife in an urban area, and you can attract a variety of them just by putting out food for them. Or you can build simple nest boxes for birds like swallows and chickadees. They'll return the favor by feeding voraciously on insects and other pests in your garden. Even where there are lots of people around, barn swallows will build their nests in a place that's sheltered and warm. Other birds keep pretty much to themselves. How many visitors to the Stanley Park Zoo are aware of the herons nesting in the trees high above them? How many joggers on the seawall ever notice the cormorants nesting on the cliffs at Prospect Point? Much more familiar birds are Canada geese. Years ago, when this was all coastal forest, they had no reason to come here. But now that there are open grassy areas where they can graze, and people to feed them, you can see them nesting in places like Stanley Park and along the Fraser River. It's not hard to see why there are so many of them. And it's easy to see why people like to have them around. Skunks, not the sort of thing you want to see in your backyard. You're not likely to see them very often, since they usually do keep to wooded and bushy areas. But if their natural habitat is destroyed, they'll move into the suburbs, finding shelter under buildings and getting food from gardens and garbage cans. A broken gutter at the corner of the roof a handy tree, and warm attic space. 
just the place for raccoons. They're intelligent and adaptable animals that take readily to urban life and to an urban diet of cat food, crackers, and grapes. Oh, they can make a mess when they get into your garbage cans, and they don't always get along with household pets. But they can be friendly and playful, and they're wonderful stories of them doing things like watching television and listening to classical music. Summer is for downtown birds, the ones that have really adapted to life in the city. These pigeons are descendants of the cliff-dwelling rock doves of Europe, so they're quite at home on building ledges. But they rely on humans for food, whether it's seed put out for them, or thrown out with the garbage, or grain spilled from rail cars. Another city bird, the northwestern crow, is normally a bird of the beaches and foreshore. But large numbers of them come into the city to feed on the abundance of garbage and food scraps to be found there. The most common bird in Vancouver can be seen all over the city, and in most other cities in North America, for that matter. Back in the 1890s, a hundred European starlings were released in New York City. They spread all over North America, reaching Vancouver in the 1940s. You can see them on streets and parks, and around garbage containers. And you can't miss them if you're near one of their roosting sites. Like crows, Gulls fly into the city each day, not only to harborside places like these fish docks, but wherever there's garbage to be found. It's not only birds that are attracted to garbage. On summer evenings, bears come down from the North Shore Mountains to feed at garbage dumps. But they also get into residential areas. And when they start knocking over garbage cans and generally act as if they were in a national park, then you get the frantic calls to the RCMP and to the Fish and Wildlife Branch. A coyote. Normally you wouldn't find coyotes anywhere near Vancouver, but by clearing the forest and creating areas of grassland like this, humans have also created a suitable habitat for coyotes. Coyotes aren't usually too disturbed by human activities. This one has not only gotten used to the machine, it actually uses it when it's hunting. The mice and voles that live in the grass are much easier to find right after the mower has gone by. Fall is a time of movement and migration. Shorebirds, coming thousands of miles from the high Arctic, heading for Central and South America thousands of miles away. This is the time to be at the very edge of the city, 
On one side of the dike, people are going to work, kids going off to school. On the other side, the marsh, the sea, and the sky. And waves of snow geese arriving from Alaska and Siberia. On the mountain side of the city, the deer finish up the last vegetables of the season. They've been here for most of the summer, done a fair bit of damage to rose bushes and vegetable gardens, and they've become quite tame. Oh, it's a temptation to some people, the thought of venison in the freezer. A fair exchange, perhaps? Winter brings wind and rain. Lovely weather for ducks. Groups of golden eye, rafts of scoter, loons and grebe and merganser. You don't have to go far to see 20 or more different species. They're on the water all around the city and on just about every lake and lagoon in the urban area. Of course, all cities support a vast array of living creatures. There are insects and spiders, beetles and butterflies, and rodents and reptiles. There are animals that live underground, creatures that live in the water, and birds and animals that are mainly active at night. The ones we see most often are those that have adapted to urban conditions. And with a little effort and some patience, we can also find those that live in wilder, more natural areas of the city and suburbs. Some species are threatened. As the city expands, natural vegetation is cleared and sources of food and shelter are destroyed. Other species thrive by adapting to the human environment. Sparrows know where to find food and they appreciate the warmth of a car hood. Raccoons come out during the day instead of at night, as they usually do. There are some troublemakers. The problem with skunks is well known, and it's obvious that pigeons and starlings can make an awful mess of city buildings. But the wild creatures of the urban world can be a source of pleasure, and more. They provide a direct link to the natural world that surrounds us to the natural rhythms and cycles of life that are so easily lost to us in the city. By making natural features and natural vegetation a part of urban development, by preserving some wild places, and by maintaining clean air and water, we can make the city a better place for ourselves and for wild creatures. In the meantime, it's a matter of keeping our eyes and ears open at dawn, at dusk, at any time of day, throughout the changing seasons of the year. <laughs> ¶¶ 